GT Holidays, South India's number one travel brand. Hello and welcome to Galata Plus. In this video review episode, we are going to be talking about Ashik Abu's Neil Avalicham. The film stars Tovino Thomas, Lima Kalingal, Roshan Matthew, and it nails the retro look and feel, but it lacks an emotional connect. Now, that is a short review. If you want a longer review, which is ahead, there's going to be a lot of spoilers, so do watch at your own discretion. Now, Neela Velicham is based on the short story of the same name by Vaiko Mohammad Bashir, which was made into a blockbuster film version named Bhargavi Nilayam in 1964. That is the year the new film is set in, and if there is one image that sums up Neela Velicham, it's that of a romance being depicted by two flowers with a butterfly flitting between them. This romance is told in a flashback and that's a time when the only way to show intimacy on screen was through suggestive nature imagery. But there's another exquisite layer here which comes from a song in the older film that is recreated here, Anuraga Madhu Chashakam. The dancer is Bhargavi, she's played by Rima Kalingal and she's outfitted like a butterfly. The lyrics too refer to her as a butterfly, Nyanuru Madhumasa Shalapamallo and the flowers are an integral part of the film's decor. So in the present day, the Bhargavi from the flashback is a ghost in a white sari. There's a lovely explanation for the colour of the attire which comes in a conversation with her lover played by Roshan Matthew. So this Bhargavi, the one in the white sari, she haunts the house she lived in and Neela Velicham opens deceptively with an intruder who is terrorised by this ghost on a moonlit night. But the film that follows is not exactly a horror movie. The protagonist is a writer played by Tovino Thomas. The way he refers to himself, Pavapata Sahitya Karan, hints that he has an elevated literary sensibility. Why does he continue to live in a house that he knows is haunted? Did no one warn him when he paid the advance? Did he not sense anything wrong when he enters the premises and finds the place in a shambles with apparently more dust and cobwebs than bricks and mortar? And why isn't he scared of the ghost, at least initially? This lack of conventional logic allows two readings. One. When the writer decides to pen down Bhargavi's story, when he casually talks to her as though she is a real person, the act can be seen as a creator in communication with his muse in order to make art. And what is a muse but a kind of ghost? It's unseen, it appears at its own will and it possesses you to create something. When the writer, who is Bashir himself, though he is not explicitly called so, when he decides to find out what happened with Bhargavi, he is in essence doing research for a story. And two, the writer and the ghost are kindred spirits, if you will. In a bold screenwriting choice, given the attention span these days, we get two solo songs in quick succession, one for the writer and one for the ghost. Both songs are about loneliness, they are about yearning. And even physically, the writer and the ghost are shot similarly. They are reflected in mirrors, they are filmed through doorways that act like frame within a frame. They are often dressed in white and they are often seen by the sea. That's why Neera Velicham is not a horror movie. Seen either way, the ghost is a metaphor and we are never sure if we are seeing a real story being uncovered by the writer or if we are always within this writer's story story within his imagination or within Bashir's imagination. The surreal elements like the slow spreading blue light of the title, they add to this feel. The other feel of the film is full on retro. We get a Pankaj Malik LP record and an Avara song. We get coy looks from a coal eyed Bhargavi and her sitar playing lover. We get a tribute to Bashir's own Matilukal, which was written in the mid 1960s. Most importantly, we get the pace of a retro movie, a long and patient build up to the interval point. And even afterwards, when things really begin to happen, the pace doesn't exactly pick up. The film is a deliberate slow burn. But while these aspects are impressive to note and to process in the mind, there is no emotional connection, neither in the flashback between Bhargavi and a lover, nor in the present day story between Bhargavi and the writer. The latter is a crucial misstep because we really need to feel the bond the writer develops with his ghost muse. The role is right up to Vino's comfort zone and he's lovely as a bespectacled presence, but he's given nothing significant to chew on. No actor is really. Bashir wrote the screenplay for the older film and the additional writing here is by Krishikesh Bhaskaran, but there isn't one moment that truly surprises you. Shine Tom Chako's character is especially one note. His shifty behaviour early on marks him out as the possible villain and when he does turn into one, he is just a villain. There is no psychology to the man. 
as a result we are left with an academic exercise an homage a tribute rather than an affecting work of art there is art behind the camera to be sure it's there in girish gangadhar's delicate colors and frames it's there in bijibal and rex vijay's superb recreations of ms baburaj's older songs vasanta panchami nalil is especially gorgeous but the utter simplicity and predictability of the surface story which may have been enough for a 1960s audience makes neela velicham a slog to sit through the retro touches are fine the problem is that the writing has not been brought to the modern day it is too respect full of the original material and there is no new take no new angle no new approach there is beauty in the thoughts there is beauty in the making but the beauty in the story's central conceits never comes through the film itself is a ghost it slips away as you are watching it it needed a lot more narrative flesh and blood and that's it for ashik kapoor's neela velicham if you like this video review do subscribe to galata plus and see you soon at the movies gt holidays south india's number one travel brand